You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Dominic and Alyssa from the band Muralist. Their new album, Fathoms, came out on April 2nd, and it's my favorite album of the year so far. It has eight tracks of absolute awesomeness. They don't let up. You need to check out this album. You need to check out this band. And if you want to see them live, check them out on August 7th. They're going to be at the Amityville Music Hall with Loss Becomes and none other than Moon Tooth. So it's going to be an awesome show. I really wish I could go to it, but I'm pretty much on the other side of the world from them. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not going to miss it, but if you're in the New York area, make sure you check it out. Anyways, Dominic, Alyssa, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Thank you very much for having us. Excited to talk and get into some fun topics. <laughs> Before we get into everything with the band, I like to just get more background on both of you guys. So tell me your superhero origin stories. How did you guys find your passion for music growing up? <clears throat> Um, I mean, I always wanted to play guitar when I was a kid, but, uh, for a long time, didn't really think I would ever get one. always saw guitars at the store and my parents would just kind of walk by and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. One day. And then, uh, one day my brother bought me one. Uh, I was homesick and he like pretty bad for a couple of weeks. And he just basically was like, here's a guitar. And I was like, really? <laughs> and basically my dad, uh, my dad had to pay for lessons after that. And it just <laughs> went from there. <laughs> I feel like my origin story is pretty common, um, like family inducting you into the throes, I guess, of music. My dad is a bassist. Um, all his brothers play bass and guitar. So it was sort of like the... Um, like thing to do. So he played and I was like, I I'll do that too. And at a very young age, got my first bass, like a red Ibanez for Christmas one year. And, you know, I was like, Oh dad, like, how do you, how do you play ramble on by Led Zeppelin? And just sort of like went from there. So it's always been very like close to my life and, you know, connecting in that way with family and obviously making it my own over the years and, and all that fun stuff. What about your early influences that you guys got? Like, what were the first bands that you became huge fans of? What kind of music were you, was moving you back then? I think that when I first started playing, it was a lot of the classic rock. And I sort of joke about being brainwashed, but listening to a lot of Yes, a lot of Rush, Led Zeppelin, um, Black Sabbath, and then eventually finding my way and finding tool and a perfect circle and incubus and things like that you know over the years sort of escalated but there's really um i feel like no bigger influence than some of those like really classic records and, and tracks especially between rush and yes and you know being a bassist was very influential especially you know hearing it all the time in my house and then sort of finding my own connection with it it's a really nice sort of progression to go through when learning and being inspired yeah from for me like around the time i got my first guitar i was pretty much obsessed with corn and uh <laughs> i just wanted to play big heavy riffs like i didn't really care about solos like i didn't care about doing anything super technical or anything like that i just wanted to play heavy low tuned riffs. I didn't really know how to, of course, and I had to figure all that out. But as I started going to guitar lessons, my teacher, who was a lot older, obviously, and he was like, no, you got to learn like Black Sabbath and you got to learn Pantera. And I became obsessed with Pantera basically for most of middle school into high school. And that's all I played. And, <laughs> and I kind of forgot about all the new metal stuff for a while. And you know, into high school, I finally started playing in a band and got more into like the progressive stuff and kind of tool and uh, dream theater between the buried and me like that kind of all started filling my brain with uh, craziness. And, you know, basically, that was the trajectory. <laughs> so now we need to get into the beginning of the band. Like, how did you guys all meet each other? How did this come about? Uh, well, so Dave, our vocalist, and Keith, our drummer, went to high school together. Um, 
they had been in a band previously that was sort of fusiony and rock like incubus kind of style and they weren't doing anything like that musically together for a while but um i'm a tattoo artist uh, on long island new york and uh basically dave started coming to me for tattoos and uh through a connection of a friend of a friend basically and he you know we we kind of connected on music and over like a year or two after starting the tattoo him and talking to him pretty much, you know, on a weekly basis, basically, um, he told me that him and Keith had started a project. Uh, they had a guitarist originally, but that guitarist wanted to do an instrumental band, which kind of left Dave out, which meant Keith was also out because he wanted to be in a band with Dave. So they were like, we need a new guitarist. Do you want to be a part of this? And I definitely liked the uh, the sound of what they were looking to do and kind of just started meeting up from there. And so when you guys started jamming on ideas, it was kind of like ideas that Keith and David had put together? Uh, so, well, initially they had ideas of kind of the sound, but they really wanted direction, I guess, from guitar, the guitar point of view in a way. And, um, so I started just showing them riffs that I was like, I started jamming on. And then we kind of used that as a bridge, as a bridge to like knowing the direction of where the vocals might go. Um, Alyssa obviously joined a little later, but, um, you know, we started writing together. We had a bassist at the time that we kind of like injected into the writing process. But uh, mostly it was me coming up with riffs. Keith kind of bouncing off of that and then Dave figuring out where his vocals sat. And, um, and then Alyssa joined the band and it kind of just changed actually a lot about the direction, but like in a, in a very good way. And what was it like for you, Alyssa? What do you remember in the early days approaching the band? Um, I feel like when I first joined, you know, it was sort of like I was a little nervous. You know, I didn't want to be, say, over opinionated with things like my my brain sort of you know absorbs a lot and I I tend to overthink so I'd hear things and I'd like mull over the riffs and um, it took me a while to really get comfortable I think like finding my voice and like finding that ability to like make suggestions and um, to really like be more comfortable just sort of throwing ideas out there but you know over many months you know it obviously became apparent that you know, we were really all on the same page. And the more I, you know, got comfortable, the more we all were getting comfortable working together. It really opened up for a lot of, you know, experimentation with different melodies and, um, you know, different things like that. So really awesome learning process and just being able to create with other people that, you know, trying to all create really the same thing. It's a really like nice opportunity. And I'm really happy for it. It seems like you guys really took your time to figure out the chemistry because like when you listen to this album, it doesn't sound like this is an album written by the drummer or the guitarist or something like that. Like you all have your own little elements here and there and you all have like something to say and it all just kind of comes together and fits together so nicely. Was it a long time of trying to figure out just like basically your sound in general? Yeah. Um, it was, it was definitely, uh, I feel like a process, a, a very, yeah, it was kind of a lengthy process in a way, because as I said, we had another bassist at the time when we started the band, I kind of brought my friend, uh, Justin along to be in the band. And, um, he kind of just, you know, he, he was kind of a stopgap for a while. He was in the band, but like we were writing me me writing guitar parts. We were kind of just like figuring out what do we want to be as a band. And then me and Alyssa actually started dating a couple of years, a year or so later, and she'd hear what we were writing and she'd give me some input and stuff. And then when our old bassist left and she came into the fold, we kind of really narrowed down, like, what do we want our music to be like, really? Because up to that point, we had written kind of a variety of like different styles that just kind of sort of worked. And we had not a clear direction at that up to that point. But I think once it was all four of us and we knew that we wanted to write in a very collaborative way, we knew it could be difficult, but that it was the best route for getting, I guess, the best sound overall and something that's 
like you said, not an individual or a solo project, like a truly collaborative sound. And not even that, you know, one person has more of a say than others. I think we're all very mindful of the fact that we all want to have a say and to be able to, you know, not just sort of just accept what someone wants to do on a track and and really like understand what their vision is, how, you know, if it's, if it's a drum piece, like, and Keith's hesitant or there's a vocal line and Dave's hesitant, like we'll really, you know, sort of really mindfully like come together and be like, okay, how do we feel about this? What are the other possibilities? And it really is like a, a really big team effort in that sense. And, and going into this album, Fathoms, I was kind of, oh, I, I like the asking this question is, is there any point in this album that was like one of the hardest parts for you guys to figure out just to write? Um, I think more, more or less it was actually figuring out the order of the tracks. That was probably the most challenging part. Um, really? We we had a few I a few songs that we we knew worked together like back to back and stuff and but like I mean we're definitely like the most democratic band when it comes to making <laughs> decisions we we can't make a decision until everyone's completely happy and I guess that's what makes it take so long to do do things but <laughs> at the same time I think that's a great way to do it because in the end we we uh, release something and everyone's good. And, you know, like I've been in bands or in situations where, you know, you release a couple of songs and a few years later, everyone kind of hates them and nobody wanted to say anything. <laughs> and it's just like we're all willing to speak up. And that makes it both challenging, but also really rewarding. I, f I find that really interesting that you say that it, that it was challenging to figure out the order of the songs, because I was going to say on this album, you guys just don't have any filler. It's It's all good substance there's no like i don't know sometimes a band will come out and say look we got 70 minutes of music on our new album but it's really like 40 minutes of music and a half hour of like weird ambient sounds in between tracks and stuff <laughs> you guys don't have that you cut out the filler and you just like here's a really really good song get ready because here comes another one we got eight of these left so you, you better look <laughs> <laughs> it's a marathon right uh so it's i just love the fact that i can pick anywhere on the album and just start at that song and just keep going and it, it's interesting that you'd said that it was hard for you guys to pick the order of the tracks because it feels like it just flows. Well, I appreciate that. That like makes my heart very happy. <laughs> um, we actually have one song. Um, the song Epiphany was sort of meant to be a filler and, you know, sort of became a little bit more than that. And we had, you know, maybe talked a few times about having some of those moments, whether it be like, 30 seconds or a minute at the end of a song or you know would that be something that would be its own track as like an interlude and it was something that we did sort of consider and go back and forth about ended up really just sort of excluding it for this album and I think that you know it came out the best it could be and you know even in recording it working with Anthony and Ray at Westfall um in Farmingdale like they had a lot of input. Also, there were moments where we weren't sure if songs were necessarily, you know, really complete sounding and they helped like, you know, with that in that respect. So really putting every putting the pieces together really mattered to us because we didn't want there to ever be a moment where someone, you know, listened to the album and then felt like, OK, I want to skip this or or whatever. So to, to hear you say that, that's that's yeah. fantastic. That's all we want. Yeah, it sounds like we achieved what we were hoping <laughs> for, which is great. But um, yeah, I mean, it just came down to that, like, in today's day and age, we know that most people are streaming music. And if they see a track that's 46 seconds, and it sounds like nothing's about to happen, and most people don't have patience for things like that. And <laughs> I think we realized, like, the faster we get into a song, probably the better the faster something happens that's going to capture someone's attention, the better off we will be. And that's not to say that it diminishes what we can do. It just means that we have to, I don't know, just be smarter about how we organize our, our music and make sure that it, there's never a dull moment. Mm -hmm. 
but it doesn't feel squished either. I, like it, I, I feel like you're able to achieve uh, what can be achieved in a 10 minute song, but some, I, I look back and I'm like, that was only five minutes long. Like how the hell did they manage to fit all of that into a five minute song without making it feel schizophrenic? Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, it, you have this, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I think you get what I mean. <laughs> I definitely appreciate it so much. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I mean, we definitely were conscious of that because in our early demoing stages of writing music a couple of years before we really started writing for this album, like we were kind of hinging on writing, overwriting and, mm-hmm. and writing like songs that were seven to 10 minutes long at times. And we would listen back to recordings of like live shows or even our demos at the time. And we'd kind of be like, have to be honest with ourselves, like, if this was an hour, <laughs> if this was an hour band, like, would we really wait for like a two and a half minute verse to be over yeah. to get to? That's when the, you insert Larry David, like, yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So we, we had to be honest with ourselves. I think it helped for sure working in stages over a couple of years where we'd record a demo, didn't really love it. And then we said, OK, what can we do to make this better next time? And And then by the time we got to the EP stage, we just already knew like kind of like the mistakes to avoid and and then help, like Alyssa said, from Anthony uh, at Westfall, like he didn't he didn't have to do a whole lot to our songs. But the things that he did suggest were like perfect, basically, like everything he suggested, like, you know what, you should cut this or, you know, what, move this over here or just end the song here. And we pretty much were all in agreement right away. So some a little outside perspective really helped, I think, narrow it down. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk to you guys about the artwork because I find it really cool. And I just kind of wanted to know where it comes from, like the skeleton and everything that you have for the the album cover. Mm -hmm. Um, So I actually designed that. Uh, No way. That's so cool. (laughs) Yeah, I I drew that. I well. This is a digital painting that I made on my iPad. So kind of started thinking about the album artwork as we were writing. We kept discussing it here and there, like, you know, thinking about the themes um, of the album, of course. It, it kind of goes into, like, I, w- I wanted to keep it vague enough that it's not, like, beating someone over the head, like, this is the concept, you need to see the album in this way. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to make sure that we were touching on the themes that I, I guess, visually found most interesting as we as within the lyrics and just within the concepts of the songs um, dealing with uh, death, um, sort of the acceptance of mortality, uh, also the cultural and ritualistic nature of the way humans over the over generations and generations have dealt with coping with you know basically existence life cycles and i don't know just like kind of the beauty of that as well and not not like going overly into like how that necessarily we interpret that or how we feel about that but just exploring the beauty of like human nature and how we cope with uh anxiety death depression that kind of stuff yeah bringing that translating it to a piece of art and then there's obviously you know some other things that are more straightforward like we have you know the the ocean element there we have there's the rocks that sort of mimic moon phases um so there's like a bunch of other things that are sort of all wrapped up and i think that the way it ended up being was perfect he did a really good job, even just with like the colors and the way it just sort of came together. Really, really happy with it. I was also really impressed by the music video you, you guys had for the song Curse. But I had to think to myself, every single song on this album sounds like a song that needs a music video. So was it, <laughs> was it hard to choose a song? Like, which song do we make a video for? Yeah, it was. <laughs> we, <laughs> it seems like everything was hard for us. But yes, <laughs> like we we kind of uh, curse was an interesting song for us because I feel like it's it was the first song we really wrote together with all four of us. And oh, OK, um, it has it had many uh, 
makeovers. Yeah, it was <laughs> it evolved many times over the course of like a year and a half of writing the other seven songs. We we kept tweaking curse because we'd come up with ideas and other songs and we'd be like, no, 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 that's more our sound. We need to change things about curse to fit what we're doing now. We sort of owed it to curse. I think like making it the first single and making and having the video for it and just having that be a very like sort of perfect, you know, initial representation of how we sound and what, you know, who we are, I feel like. Yeah, we felt like because it was like really, truly the beginning of us finally, like, I guess, cracking the code uh, in a way of what we want to do. It kind of like, we, it was like satisfying to just get it out there right away mm -hmm. and not have to think about it anymore. <laughs> and like, and I, I, I guess, like, lyrically, visually, thematically, it was a little outside of some of the other elements of the of the album thematically speaking but like it lends itself well yeah. for a music video yeah, it's it was short something, enough and... it was something that we were definitely going to be able to like create a story with and you know sean from washed up media that produced and recorded and everything for that um really like dove in with us you know it was like oh we're thinking of throwing feathers like and he's like yeah let's let's fucking do it like <laughs> we were in like a warehouse like dropping feathers like take after take and you know all this all this fun stuff we got to do you know some fun like ritualistic things and just incorporate a lot of fun more you know beeline and stuff like that which was a little bit harder to sort of vision you know bringing it to life as far as the other songs though and like dom just said like it was one of the shorter ones so i was like okay that'll probably hold people's attention a little bit longer than one of the, you know, five minute and 40 second songs or something. But I still imagine if when I listen to all the other ones, there's such like a soundtrack quality to it. Like <laughs> with Fathoms, I was just like, oh, like imagine the video for this. Oh, imagine the video for <laughs> AI Theist. Like that'd mm. be such a crazy video. I, yeah. I, I don't even know. It's just, they all deserve a video. So it must've been really hard to choose, but that's really cool that Curse is has such a, an, a uh, story behind it that's so representative of you guys it must have felt really good to get that out there i want to know now like we got the show coming up in august with moon tooth but what what else is on the horizon for you guys are you going to try to make more videos what do you what what's what's going on what can we expect i think that we definitely want to do another video you know the same way you're sort of seeing it is how we see it you know we listen to the songs and we practice and it's like yeah it'd be cool if that had a video that had a video so maybe narrowing down you know a second and obviously trying to to play out more and figure out you know getting on some shows and potentially you know putting out some new stuff and just really trying to to be more active and you know even just even just like enjoying the process of you know are we gonna how are we gonna write now like seeing what's different now that this album has been completed so hopefully you know playing shows and continuing to write and balancing all of that and looking forward to it yeah i think we just uh you know we want to kind of i mean this is our debut album so it you know it it, it feels big and small at the same time it's big for us uh it's also just getting our feet wet like we yeah. need people to like get to know us we want to definitely play shows and we have a few different bands and stuff in the area that we we would like to play shows with we've you know had some conversations so we'll see what happens but uh yeah basically playing shows probably another music video uh and starting to write more honestly awesome looking forward to all of those <laughs> <laughs> This is a staple question that I always ask people, and it's it's kind of corny, but I still like to ask it. <laughs> what advice would you guys give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? I feel like I need to ask myself that sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> pretty often. I um, feel like it's important to not be so overly concerned with how anything you do is going to be received if it feels genuine and it's coming, you know, from really deep within you, don't question it. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Enjoy it. Um, 
I think that's the best advice. That's, you know, something that I have to remind myself kind of on a daily basis. And that um, I think is one of the most important things when you're creating anything is just to be true to yourself and what your vision is, no matter what, and don't let anything sort of stand in your way. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of going off of that, I think like having patience and being persistent is what I would suggest for the most part, because being true, true to yourself, of course, like you have to make and create what comes to you naturally, or not necessarily even completely naturally, but just what your instincts are telling you, you should be trying to do. And I, I find that, you know, stuff, stuff doesn't just happen overnight. And a lot of people I think give up very quickly or too quickly, at least on pursuing, uh, dreams and pursuing like big things. People think, I think too small sometimes, and they're, they're so quick to just kind of settle for what they have as opposed to continuing to push further. I think it's a combination of just believe, like truly believing that you as an individual can achieve big things is the biggest hurdle probably to actually achieving those things. That's right. I mean, a lot of us just don't actually believe in ourselves. When you really start to strip away the layers, you see this whole inner monologue that's just defeating you. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about fathoms. It's it's such a good, (laughs) you mix these, this definition of the word, like uh, to fathom something, to, to think about it, to conceptualize it. And then also like the idea of like depth into the ocean, you know, the, the idea that, you know, the waves on the surface are actually being caused by things way underneath. It's so, so cool. (laughs) (laughs) So I just, I love it. I love the fact that you guys talk about these subjects on the album and just also don't try to beat us over the head with it. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it so, so much. It's so fun to like hear, you know, someone that's not, we start to, I feel like sometimes we start to go a little stir crazy and just sort of wonder like, does anyone like, think that we're insane like what's going on do people <laughs> do, does anyone care about this <laughs> like when when you put so much of yourself into something that i think is also kind of going back to your last question like it's hard to put a lot of a lot of yourself into something and then be vulnerable yeah and and wait for reaction like that's scary you know it just is it's just scary for anybody and i think like that's, you know, like I could speak for Dave a little bit, like when he writes lyrics and when he, when we come up with concepts and build around what he's, he's trying to say, like part of that, like visual storytelling is really where like you're, we are allowed able to like delve into like the depths of our inner thoughts and inner feelings without like being so vulnerable and so stripped back that we're almost too personal to the point where somebody can't relate it to like their own you know, their own thoughts and their own, you know, feelings and emotions. Like I think good music should be as universal as possible when it comes to like people being able to take it in and relate to it as opposed to just feeling like they're listening to someone talk about themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a spectrum of how specific you can be or something like that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to say to our listeners? (laughs) I suppose if you have made it this far, thank you for listening. And we appreciate you taking the time to get to know our music and um, what we're doing a little bit deeper. And we definitely appreciate it. We'd love to hear from anyone that has listened to the album, you know, whether you hate it, love it, you know, what your favorite songs are. We'd love to just connect and, and know that. So the invitation's always there to reach out and to let us know what you think. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) I just, yeah, I think creating, at least for me, I could speak for myself for sure, but I think like all of us, like we create music to connect with humans, you know, and it's (laughs) like, that's, it is a, an interactive process, even though we create it in our own little like corridor and then, you know, but like, I think uh, it's all about just connection and yeah, it'd be great to hear from anybody who actually gives our music a listen. And for people who do want to hear your music, where's the easiest for people, easiest place for people to find you guys online? Well, through our Instagram, we have uh, a link tree 
um, in our bio that pretty much can connect you to any place that you have an account, whether it's Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, we have everything up on YouTube for free as well. Uh, if you don't have an account with streaming, because we just want people to be able to hear it no matter what. We also have a band camp uh, on there as well, where you could either purchase the album. We have some merch available. So yeah, through our, our Instagram, uh, Mirrorless Music. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been talking with Dominic and Alyssa from the band Muralist. Their new album, Fathoms, came out on April 2nd, and you got to check it out on August 7th. They're going to be at the Amityville Music Hall with Lost Becomes and Moontooth. So it's going to be an awesome show. Everybody go check it out. Dominic, Alyssa, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care of yourselves. You You too. too.